thank you very much, uh, Vinka, for this interview. Can you present yourself? Oh, okay, yeah. So my name is Vinka Wiedemann, and uh, I uh, have been working with film since I was 20. Uh, I was educated as a film editor from the National Film School of Denmark, and then I soon turned into script writing and uh, teaching. Uh, I was a film school student in the 80s and film school teacher in the 90s. And, uh, I, uh, and then I wrote my first script. And after that, I, it was made into a feature film and I, I thought I would, I would write more scripts. But then uh, I got a position as a commissioning editor at the Danish Film Institute. And after that, I, I uh, became uh, the first artistic director of something called New Danish Screen which is kind of experimenting scheme for young filmmakers. And after that, I went to continue with my job as more, more and more turning into becoming a script consultant and what I call a story supervisor, story advisor. It's quite diverse what I've done, but I try to make some kind of logic out of it. <laughs> Basically, uh, I talk to uh, directors and screenwriters and producers mainly about the development of the project. And I'm working uh, mainly in feature films and mainly, but mainly in, in fiction projects, but it could be both feature films and, uh, and, and television series. And it's on a very individual basis. I have a lot of young talent. I have a lot of very experienced talent I work with. And some of the people are people I've been working with for decades and others is uh, someone I meet tomorrow. <laughs> so it's pretty diverse and I try to adapt. I have kind of a set of special way of working, but, uh, but it's, the, it's kind of, we also define it for each project. For example, I would also in some of my projects be uh, a part of the process of uh, making storylines, develop the storyline. So it's not just being an analyst, it's also participating in, in the creation, the cr more creational, creational parts. Yeah. And do you think that your job is close to be a psychologist of screenwriters? No, I see myself as, as a colleague. So, so I see my, uh, of course, there's a lot of uh, uh, psychological things, you know, into it. Uh, and I, I would say that if, if there's something, it would be kind of a, I don't think you can be under, have an overview and be down into the detail at the same time. Uh, so when, when you're really very much into detail, what happens is you become blind. So you need someone from the outside or maybe not from the outside, but someone who is not part of all the details in order to, you know, regain a bigger perspective. So it can be kind of a game we play, you know, where I go into detail and they are like that. So, so uh, I see myself as a colleague to them uh, and not like someone, uh, but, but someone who can uh, initiate, like do an intervention. It's like doing an intervention. You can agree to do an intervention. So I'm just the person performing that intervention. <laughs> okay. And so what, how did you uh, create your tools? I mean, you, you, uh, how do you learn to be what you do? Yeah, I think uh, being educated as a film editor is really interesting, uh, was crucial to me because uh, first of all, I, I, I think film editing is fantastic. I just realized that uh, if I should be a really good editor, I would have to only do film editing. And uh, especially at that time, you know, when it was film, you had to decide to, to, you know, to sit in a very small dark room the rest of your life. And I had tried to be uh, a teacher and, you know, so it was much broader. So I, I realized I probably wouldn't be really as good a film editor as I wanted to be. But the great thing about film editing is, first of all, you're in the core of what is specifically film cinematic. The other thing is you, you realize what happens with the script afterwards. Uh, 
you realize, I believe that when you only work with screenwriting, with, with the script, it's kind of, you, you tend to forget what happens afterwards. So you tend to see it like closed circuit, whereas, I mean, the reality is it's just a blueprint of something that goes on. And basically you can just, you know, most of it is things that you can change afterwards. So, uh, so I think I got, uh, it's, it's very valuable for me to know what happens with the film afterwards. And, and I brought that into my counseling. In Denmark, we have a big tradition of sharing. So uh, we are very, uh, we have a tradition of being open in our creative process. So we very often have colleagues, we invite colleagues to read our early versions of the script and give comments. And we also invite uh, colleagues uh, in the uh, early stages of editing. So we will have uh, fellow directors, fellow editors, fellow screenwriters to look at, uh, at the early stages of editing. So it goes without saying that being an old film editor, I'm also very often invited in to, to look at that. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Maybe a, a more physic, um, philosophical question. Mm -hmm. What is for you the goal of stories? Uh, survival. <laughs> survival and, and of course, uh, I mean, uh, it is, uh, to me, it is uh, creating meaning in life. And it's not that I'm convinced that there's not meaning. Uh, I don't know if if meaning exists in advance or if we create it out of nothing. Uh, that would be a little bit like asking, you know, about the chicken, the, the hen and the egg, what comes first. Uh, but it's not that I think that it's, the universe is necessarily without meaning, but I believe that, that that stories is kind of how we breathe, how humans breathe. So it's like we swim in stories, we breathe stories. Stories is all around us, and uh, and um, and it's a way of yeah um, creating meaning. I, be, I I think it is, but it it's more also maybe about creating hope or creating challenge or creating. Uh, provocation so it's not like uh, yeah this is really this may be really in concrete it's just like I feel that we are stories that's what constitute us as human beings I don't think that dogs or elephants create stories we don't know but I don't think they do I think it's something that happened in our brain so we have to do it and uh, and it's and I think also it's yeah it's a great thing it's a great and mysterious thing. <laughs> how do you how do you make sure that you master the meaning of your story? Oh, but you don't. You don't. You don't. You don't. That's kind of the first advice. Don't think that you uh, the, the meaning. If you know the meaning, then you don't need to make the film. So so for me, uh, an interesting film or an interesting story is about a question. So it's something that triggers you. Something, uh, so, so for me, art is about asking questions. It's not about answering them. The, 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 the question is something that opens for your fantasy, for your imagination. And, and you can ask a question via your story. I think we have this tendency, we want to answer questions. So, uh, so it's, it's also something you, you're working on throughout the process. It's like now we gave too many answers. So it's often, you know, in a good process, you're always kind of questioning yourself. Why does the scene end like this? So it's kind of a recurrent revelation when you sit that you kind of, because you're looking for answers, but you don't want to give it. So, so uh, that's, I guess, uh, when you see the Truffaut uh, debut film, uh, Quatre Sans Coups, 
it's an uh, it's a nice thing that his when he stands there with by the sea, it's like his one big question mark: What should I do from here? And the and the film doesn't answer it. Or uh, Antonioni blow up is kind of you know you're in the middle of a mystery, you don't know the answer to it. So it's like um, it's it's. That is maybe the goal you want to achieve, but it's difficult and it's a process where you have to challenge yourself all the time in your process. So even if you have your own answer, you shouldn't uh, put it in the story. Even if you have what? Your own answer as a screenwriter, you shouldn't put it in the story. Ah, uh, maybe, but no, no, but I think, you know, one you of the things... <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's what, that's when you take me in and I say, I see it, you know, mm. you didn't hide, hiding. Ha ha ha, mm. you know. So that's when you have a character that is not really engaging, your main character, it will often be because you're too clever. So it's like you know the answer to the, you know, this character has a problem and I know how to, what he should do to solve it. He needs the psychological development. It just becomes boring. If so, someone in this room knows the answer to the mystery of life, uh, bring it on. I don't know it. So when, you know, if you're young, or, you know, you want so much to understand the meaning of life, but I mean, come on. If someone came and said, I know the meaning of life, would you believe him? I mean, would you be interested? Ah, sit down and I will tell you about the meaning of life. I mean, you would, at least when you get older, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. You know, it's, it's not where the, where the fascinating stuff lies. So, but, but uh, we, but since we also want, it's, I think it has to do with another thing. We like to have a distance, you know, as, as creators, we kind of look at the world in a, in with, I call it the warm eye and the cold eye. So it's like, you care for your characters, you're close to them, you know them by heart, you, you, want to reveal their secrets, but you also want to show when they are, you know, cheating on themselves. When they, when they think they're doing one thing, but they're lying to themselves. So that's a cold eye, where you observe them from a distance. And this, the, the, the thing is to work with both things at the same time. And I think that the more you can do that, the, then you kind of, it's kind of a continuum. It's like a universe you open. You create a, uni you create a space that's very wide because you both can feel them be inside their skin and at the same time be at an enormous distance. So, but then you also have the story because this is about time. So it's about time and space and specificity. So depending on what structure you make and what the ending is. It's like you can open it to many more questions about this character. If you don't allow for the characters to surprise you, then you're not open to the fact that you created uh, something which should be a mystery because all human beings are mysteries to us. We think we know someone, we know nothing about them. The, your closest your f closest friend, your lover, your mother, your daughter, you know nothing of them, they're mysteries. They're mystery to you. And if you don't acknowledge that part, that makes it, maybe he's not lying, maybe you're lying, you know. If you don't have that, then that's, this is where mystery and engagement and empathy and all that stuff comes. <laughs> I like the idea that you try to, to explore possible answers. Because that kind of, is like feeding, you know, you know, you feed like, it could be like this. It could be like this, but also it could be like this, because that, then you show a variety. Uh, uh, and that's, uh, that, that is uh, one way of exploring a character. And also exploring an arena or a plot if you know too much about the plot, it's just predictable. So, so the, the big thing about uh, all this dramaturgy thing and then this happens on page 17 and blah, 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 it kind of just calls for a predictable scenario. 
uh, which is boring. So you want to, of course, to create anticipation and suspense, but also surprise. So, so uh, um, your plot should be have it's in a way it's the same as with character. It should be open for interpretation that it could go this way and this way, uh, and and of course at the same time you uh, you work with a set of I think we all work with a set of uh, methods and tricks and tricks of the trade tricks of the culture uh, a way we like a story to be that also directs the way we invent it. I, a good friend of mine went to Tibet at a point to try to be in the solitude for a long time. And uh, then he interviewed monks, Tibet Buddhist monks, who were also, you know, living isolated for a very long time. Well, but what he told me was completely different. When the, he asked them about the story of their life, he realized that when we ask, ask that question, we will tell the story very much like when we do a film, you know, with climax and suspense and surprise and, you know, and, and uh, in order to create engagement. But when the Tibet, the Buddhist monk told his story, it was like, he felt it was really boring, but he realized it was because he anticipated our, you know, climax structure. And they were not obsessed with climax. <laughs> and that led to a completely different way of storytelling. Uh, I don't know what we can use it for, but I think maybe we can use it to realize that this is also a cultural thing. So we are actually, we don't see it because we are so absorbed in our culture. But even this thing with the climax is something that uh, we should maybe question or challenge at least. And, and we know that, uh, I mean, one of my favorite quotes is, of course, go down with this with uh, beginning, middle and end, but not necessarily in that order, because, you know, because we can always play with it and we can challenge it and maybe we can find new insights. What is the importance of ending for you? The importance of? The, the end. So then if we, do, do you advise to forget about the end, so to explore? Well, Many actually, thoughts. you know, I'm, uh, uh, the thing is, I would like to do some research on that because my feeling is that, first of all, everybody think that the real good, the real geniuses will kind of just have a full-fledged vision from the beginning. Like the film is here and we just need to get it on screen. And in my opinion, that's kind of a, it's not like, it's an illusion, it's not like that. That's not how it works. So I work with, the guy I work with that came up with the greatest ideas and most original films, the one who's closest to a genius is Lars von Trier. And, and when he, when we started on Melancholia, he said, I know absolutely nothing about this film. I only know, so, so I said, ah, come on, you know a little bit. I, I only know that I want it to be in two parts. There should be two sisters. One should be the main character in the first part and the other should be in the second part. And then I know that it should begin with a wedding and it should end with a collision of Earth and another planet. And, and you know, that was what he knew, nothing more. But the thing is, you can see he was a genius or close to a genius. Last, you're not a genius, just close to a genius. So, you know, because he had a beginning and an ending. And so few people have an idea with a beginning and an ending. So few, it's so rarely, you know, I read hundreds of scripts. It's so rarely that you have the beginning and the end. Usually, you know, I say, if you don't have a beginning and an end, the nice thing is if you have the ending because then you work your way to the ending. If, but most people only have a setup, and then they don't know what to do, and then they actually postpone finding the ending. And it's like, it's just like pushing, you know, a mountain 
in front of you and it all, you know, snow, it just becomes bigger and bigger and bigger because it's like telling a story without ending, knowing the ending is, is kind of walking into a wilderness yourself. And of course, exploring your story should be like that. It's a creative process, but it would be really nice if that process, you know, if you know the goal, because then you can know the bow and then you know much, so much more about how to do the beginning. Sometimes it's like, should she live or should she die? You know, actually, it doesn't matter, but, but is he guilty or is he not guilty? That's, that's kind of a mystery. So, of course, it depends on the kind of ending, but it's, it's fantastic to work on development of projects where you know the beginning and the ending. It's just, it's wonderful. <laughs> but it's a gift and sometimes you don't have it. And, and you know, it's like, a, sometimes you only know the setup and you will kind of walk like this and it will, it will be a horrible development process, horrible shooting process, horrible editing process, but the film may be good because there may be other things that, you know, and maybe all this striving is good anyway. And it's like people say there can only be one main character. It's kind of a, I agree. But I have a lot of good colleagues who said, I, I don't care you say so. I know you always say that, Vinka, there should be one main character, but I like to have two. And it's like, yeah, and it can be really great films anyway. It just may mean that you need a damn good editor because it will take a lot of editing to find the rhythm and the focus where it doesn't really matter. And, uh, and maybe it could have been even better if there was a clear main character, but who gives a shit if you win an Oscar, you know, or go to Cannes or so. <laughs> this I, I, is Susanna Beer. Susanna Beer and I, we had uh, huge arguments on this. And I always use this example because I said, yeah, so maybe Open Hearts, which won enormous amount of awards. Yeah, there was no clear main character, but she had a good film editor. And she insisted on this. And who am I to say that? You know, it's, it's so easy to people from the outside and analysts to say, oh, be prescriptive, you should do this, you should have this. It's just you choose your own challenges. No, it's, it's the same with endings. <laughs> if you don't have an ending, it'll be a lot of work and a lot of, you know, and the, a lot of risk taking. But it's your choice. <laughs> and so are you saying that if your goal is not to answer the question of the story at the end. Uh, I mean, uh, is the, yeah, is the, do you have to avoid answering the question at the end of your story? Well, I would say that if you want to avoid answering the question, then you should know your ending. <laughs> because then you can make a clear, very clear open ending that is, it's like, you know, uh, if the, it's like this that I really, believe is true, that if you want to kill a character, it should not be to solve the plot, because that's boring. I mean, that's just an easy solution, you know. Oh, I don't really know how my story is ending, so I'll just make it an open ending. That's like the cheap, it's, it's cheap. <laughs> so it should challenge you. Uh, the, the, the ending should be artistically challenging. Do you have other advices for screenwriters that for helping them to think and write their stories? Yeah, yeah. Uh, two, two things come into my mind. One thing is uh, write, read other scripts and uh, both read, uh, read, uh, read scripts, not, you know, read not uh, like the scripts that are written on the basis of a finished film but both read like, read Blue Velvet, read the script for Blue Velvet, because it's so different from what you would think when you know the finished film. When you know the film and it's so mysterious, it's so fun to see how David Lynch and his co-writer worked with the script, because the script is actually pretty conventional in the way it builds up and information and stuff like that. That's fun to, to read. So 
also read other scripts where you haven't seen the film. So, and, and because then you don't, it's not so easy to know what should they do, you know, because you're always so wise after, ah, why didn't they do this? Why didn't they, you know? So also part of that is sharing. So share with other directors and script writers, share, find some people where you share your challenges with because uh, sharing is just a way of developing knowledge and experience like and insights in a much quicker way and it's much more fun and you can help each other out and it may be humiliating you always want to do it when i have the next version but it's now that you should do it so that's that's one thing and another thing is remember that script writing is only to a very small extent about writing. Uh, it's, uh, don't call it script writing, call it develop your projects. And, uh, and I think that we are still very much into a linear thinking where, you know, we say you write your project three times when you write the script, when you shoot it, and when you edit it. So that's kind of the basic three creative processes. But, uh, but I used to say, quoting Godard, <laughs> rephrasing Godard, uh, script, shoot and edit, but not necessarily in that order. Uh, because I think that, uh, the, and also synopsis, treatment, script, but not necessarily in that order. I think we have to realize that we can work with it in many different ways. Synopsis is so great once you edited the film. But I rarely saw a synopsis as a good tool for developing a project. It's something that's nice for decision makers. They want a synopsis, but, uh, but as a creative tool, it's not so great. But it could be to actually go out, go into a hospital if you want things to take place in a hospital. And we also always, I think, very often have a tendency to look at other films to get inspiration. Ah, it's like that film. But don't look for characters in a movie because you will just have stereotypes. Go look for real people and talk to them. So, you know, doing a lot of other things that just reading, read, uh, writing uh, on your computer. Writing on a computer is the smallest part of writing, developing a project. <laughs> I, I just think that I read so many projects that were actually bullshit. No, not bullshit, but just shitty, you know, really bad. Most projects are really, really bad. Most scripts you read are really, really, really. It's like, it's like, ah, someone said to me, it's so, you know, unfair because a good script, you read it very quickly, but a bad script is like a fight, just, a, oh, oh, how do I have to, it's so boring and, you know, confusing and, and you think, what can I say about this script? And what can I say? How, why did I say yes to, you know, to, now I have to sit with them and, you know, and pretend that I like, oh, what can I do? And then you meet them and they're really nice people and they have great ideas. And it's just because they didn't get it. And, you know, it just wasn't there yet. So, you know, be generous and, uh, and understand that it takes a miracle to make a good film. And we just, you know, so sort of sit next to them and ask them, be curious, what was, what is it you want to do? And then you can always have a great, you can always have a great, uh, a great conversation and, and make an inspirational room together. And, uh, and, and, and maybe it will turn into a great movie, you know, because uh, great people, inspired people can take really mediocre ideas and make them into great movies. That's the truth about 99% of what we see. It's mediocre ideas that is just developed with the help of a lot of people and a communal effort. And it turns surprise into something that we love. <laughs> so be generous and, uh, and uh, be curious. <laughs> Sounds so easy. I'm the much most judgmental <laughs> person of all, but uh, so that's but that's a nice ideal to have. <laughs> Do you think screenwriters have uh, responsibilities as they spread their stories uh, widely? Uh, yes, of course. 
uh, of course, the, they have a huge responsibility as do we all as human beings. Uh, uh, so, uh, so whenever we appear in the world, we have a big responsibility towards uh, our next of kin. And, to, and, and when you work in, in media, your next of kin can be all over the world. And, and, uh, and uh, being, uh, uh, and that responsibility, you have to find out how, how do you want to deal with that. Uh, uh, and, uh, and sometimes it can be to be loving or affectionate. It can also be to, you know, to provoke something or to challenge something. So I don't know what the answer is to it. And I know we're all human beings, so we all have our limitations. Uh, but I think that uh, we all have a, a, a responsibility that we cannot live up to, to be generous and, uh, and create a hope and meaning uh, to, in, in the relation to other people. <laughs> and how do you do to keep learning uh, new tools or new way of, make, of writing? Um, uh, first of all, I don't think I'm good enough at it. Um, I think that uh, I'm, that's part of why I'm here. I'm here because uh, I'm fed up with experience. I think that uh, I'm, I'm fed up with film makers, film people, only talking about uh, experience, like experiences, everything. I think that knowledge is really important and I think that uh, we can challenge ourselves from other people's knowledge and other, from other branches, from other, you know, from academic fields. It's like, you know, they actually know things about creativity. They actually, other people also know about stories. They know about perception. They know about a lot of things that we could learn from. So I, uh, so my big challenge is to kind of be open to that and even try to read a book, you know, about it. I think it's really, I find that I like to read novels, but I find it really difficult to read books about, you know, nonfiction. Um, but I think I have to dive in. I'm trying to, you know, approach it because I find it so provoking that film people say, ah, no, it's not, not for me. I'm an artist. I'm just into experience. I hate it. I'm, and I'm like that myself, so I, I'm trying to challenge that. And just working with new people. Yeah. <laughs> and even if you've been here for one day, have you learned some stuff that will help you in your work? Yeah, I've learned a lot of new things. I don't know, maybe it will make my life more complicated. <laughs> so I don't even know if it will make, but it has enriched me, you know, uh, um, and, and uh, you know, but I want to. I think I would like to finish by saying that uh, that you very often, you know, if you read something, you read a script and you think it's mediocre, or you see a cut, you know, a first cut is always awful, you know, and and so you know the worst thing in my life was when when I saw the most mediocre first cut, and it was just like. You know, the light went up and was like, you know, you just got a bit down, you know. And then the director turns and says, oh, Vinka, will you begin? It's just, and you didn't. And I was pretty young. And it was, for me, it was horrible. And it was like, uh, and it was like, I happened to say, you know, I think this, I, it was like, I just came down with 10 problems, you know. It was like giving a, you know, cold shower to the team, it was awful. And it was like, but I was so obsessed with, it's so serious, this is so, this is a drama, it's not good. And uh, we were all sitting, you know, with our pens, papers and pencils, you know, dotting down all the problems that they had to solve. And it was like, it was like, relax, it's just a movie, you know. So if I could look at myself as a younger person, I would say, relax, it's just a movie, let's have fun. It's more important to have fun and there's all be generous. There's also always something you can appreciate in a process. If nothing else, you can appreciate the effort they did, you know. So so it's don't be so bloody serious and don't be so bloody doomsday like. It's just a film and we're here to have fun to make 
to get great challenges. <laughs> thank you very much, Vinka. Okay, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs>